Hi there, Giovanni here at Fraptools, and today we are going to explore some East Coast timbers on the Brainstorm. I have recently read a couple of articles by Ryan Gaston, appeared on Perfect Circuits blog, about East Coast Synthesis and West Coast Synthesis. I will link the article in the description because it is very uh, extended and well documented and is definitely worth a reading. But at the end, the author says, I believe that the more important point worth considering is that there are no rules about how you should make music and no rules about how an instrument can work or what an instrument can be. And I find this um, consideration um, very, very meaningful, especially considering the brainstorm that we are talking about today, because the brainstorm is a complex oscillator, and the com complex oscillator design is uh, uh, bound to the instruments made by Don Buchla, which was the... Um, pinnacle of the so-called West Coast synthesis, whether we want to stick to this definition or not. But I think that there are a, a couple of timbers uh, worth exploring on the brain, so that may lean towards the, the East Coast uh, sounds. And I think that they are worth keeping in mind because you never know if you're going to need them. So the, the, the staple of the East Coast synthesis is the resonant filter, the classic Moog, the 24 dB per octave transistor ladder filter. And uh, as of uh, November 2022, when I'm filming this video, we don't have a resonant filter yet. So it might be a lost cause to dive into East Coast sounds, but another feature of uh, the, the East Coast Timber are, you know, where you blend more oscillators and they tune them and then route them to the filter, but also the uh, pulse width modulation that you can do on a, on a, on a, on a pulse wave oscillator. And uh, the classic uh, oscillator filter VCA is uh, something that we can at least uh, aim at with this setup here. So I'm going to use the, I want to start this uh, Eastern exploration by using this um, output here, which we don't use very often. And uh, it outputs the um, square wave from the yellow uh, oscillator. But as you can see, there is a switch at the bottom. And if I uh, set the switch to the left, like right now, I'm having a square wave, just like I have a square wave out of the green oscillator. Same timber. But if I push the switch to the right, I have a similar square wave, but it is coming straight from this wave folder here. You can see that it is white and it has the same symbols that we can see around this dial here. And uh, this has uh, two main consequences. The first one is that with this shaper here, we can do PWM by rotating the comparator. The way Brainso does PWM is very straightforward. It uses a comparator on the triangle core straight from the oscillator. So we are just changing the oscillator threshold. And if we use an external uh, LFO, like this phalistry here. We can perform a very thick pulse width modulation. But the second uh, consequence is that we have a shaper after the pulse wave coming out of the, our comparator. And this shaper, when set at noon, gives us uh, the ideal square wave or pulse wave. But if we rotate it to the left, we are going to attenuate the highest, uh, uh, the highest uh, overtones. So it acts as a sort of uh, uh, non-resonant uh, filter. Now if I rotate it to the left, I'm gonna attenuate the low frequencies to the right, sorry, until I have a 
low passed pulse wave again, but with inverted phase, as you can see by the two symbols down here. But there is also another uh, cool feature built in on the brain, so that allows us to have a dynamic pulse width modulation with, without using an external LFO. So, taking advantage of the uh, complex oscillator design by itself, meaning that with the, a single module we can create complex waveforms. And it is this switch down here. So, if I push the switch to the right, I'm gonna change the comparator source. Instead of using the triangle wave coming straight from the core, so that I can make PWM by changing the comparator threshold, I'm gonna use the output of the first wave shaper that we are not hearing. And by changing the shape that feeds the comparator, I am able to change the pulse width. It has a more subtle effect as opposed to changing the comparator threshold, but with this design, by keeping the comparator threshold and modulating this parameter here, we can achieve PWM. Now, how can we modulate this parameter here? Well, the answer is through the semi-normalization. So this is receiving the output from this filter, from this uh, VCA here, which is in turn receiving the output of the green oscillator. So if I route this output to this input here, I am modulating the shape at audio rate. And now if I set the green oscillator to work as an LFO, I can achieve a dynamic pulse width modulation within the brain so by just using with no cable whatsoever. And uh, the beauty of PWM is that we can fake uh, the beatings of uh, two slightly detuned oscillator. And uh, with this, we can fake a filter. So more beating, less beatings. Now, if you give me a couple of minutes, I want to lay down a sequence so that we can explore this thing in a melodic concept. Okay, so I've come up with this sequence here. I just used a pinch of variation on these, uh, on these two stages here. And I routed the um, CBA of my track through Falistris Integrator. I didn't use the internal portamento because for this flavor it is better to use a fixed time constant. Um, if you are unfamiliar with these concepts I will link to a, a frap talk on uh, portamento glissando and this kind of thing in the description and also here. There. And uh, if I increase green oscillator, I am still somehow faking the detune of my PWM. And by using this... Oh wait! I had the... I had the integrator all the way to the right, which means that I was also transposing my LFO, but I may want to have it free running. For a more 
laid back effect. And now I have programmed another gate track, uh, which I can use to um, trigger this envelope here and use it to control the filter, which in this case is my wave folder, wave shaper, sorry. But Colors. I'm gonna clone my channel A. an LFO ball we still have the Usta and the Brenso and we want to use our green oscillator for another purpose that I will show in a minute we can program uh, another track on the Usta to perform the uh, um, sort of um, fake triangle LFO uh, for example uh, by setting gate A to 0 gate B to 10 and uh, playing with the same length uh, and then patch it to our comparator threshold the CV input like this in this way we can go back to our default triangle setting and we can also play with different envelopes with a faster attack time well, with a slower attack time. Ah, there we go. If only we had a resonant filter. Anyway. My other idea for the green oscillator is uh, another iconic uh, East Coast sound that we are gonna interpret our own way, which is the hard sync. Now, hard sync is a trademark of the uh, those uh, sawtooth core oscillators. Uh, Brenso is a triangle core, which means that it doesn't perform hard sync but it performs flip sync, which has a, a more um, a mellower tone and is uh, richer in bass and uh, has a different flavor. And but it also doesn't create those kind of uh, uh, bursts that you can have every time you chop the cycle of a uh, sawtooth uh, waveform. Anyway, I will link to another frap talk that discusses the synchronization here and in the description. So we're gonna take our green waveform which now uh, probably can be heard only by whales we're gonna scale it to audio rate and uh, we're gonna hit the flip sync button 
Nice. It basically just works by itself. We can add a further integration. And we can saturate it a little bit to add more grit. If we want a sharper sound, we can use other waveforms like the sawtooth. And if we want the sync sweep, we need to animate this frequency here. We can use an LFO, or we can use a copy of the one that we are already using to modulate our PWM. But personally, I think that we can use uh, another uh, another LFO. For example, since we are, uh, we can program another track, like I don't know, perhaps track one, with another, with the same trick that we did for track three, but with a different. Uh, uh, time 126 for example and uh, a different uh, ratio or whatever the point is that it doesn't have to be in sync so we're gonna take our CVB and patch it to this input here I think I had a little bit of uh, FM going on before but just a pinch there. And we can also unlock it from the reference uh, voltage. But I think that we can sum them. I like it. Route it through the reverb as well. And let's see how it sounds together with the PWM. Ah, beautiful. We can even think about patching it to the same channel and uh, use the same envelope to gate both oscillators. And uh, we must make sure to set the stereo channel to a crossfade mode so we can define the balance between the two oscillators through this knob here. I think that it works great both ways. And this is it! I hope you found it useful and I hope that these aren't the sound you would expect from a complex oscillator but still you found them pleasant because um, knowing what your device can do, even if you don't need it, is always a versatile tool whenever you hit a sort of writer's block during your compositions. I hope you had fun and I will see you next time.